Welcome to the digital lecture series of FU West, the European Studies program of Freie Universität Berlin. At 15 sessions, we will offer you a broad overview of FU Best's academic course offerings. You can choose from 12 subject course lectures representing a wide range of disciplines and three live sessions on German language and culture. Our series is divided into four themes relevant to European studies in Berlin and Germany today. Each will be dealt with by a group of FU West instructors from the perspectives of their particular disciplines or German language levels. Part 3 tackles pressing questions of the future and analyzes concepts and answers provided by European and German political actors, entrepreneurs, media experts and philosophers. Join our instructors in their exploration of plans and challenges for a better tomorrow. All sessions will offer you insights into our instructors' semester-long regular courses within the FUBES program and the way in which they integrate Berlin as a cultural and historical location. We hope you enjoy the online program we have assembled for you. For more details about the lecture series and the regular on-site FUBES program, visit our website later. You will also find additional information at the end of today's lecture. With that, enjoy the following session and see you soon in Berlin. Hello, my name is Heike Mieves. Um, I'm an independent consultant, trainer and facilitator of sustainability in business. Um, that means I support companies in integrating social and environmental concerns into their business strategies, into their management systems, into their reporting and communication. And I've been working in this field over the past 10 years. I've been teaching the course Green Business um, since 2018. It's called Green Business, German and European Sustainable Entrepreneurship. Mm. As a born Berliner, I'm particularly happy to be part of this program as I think it really gives you a great um, insight and deep dive into what this wonderful city of Berlin is about. I myself studied here at Freie Universität Berlin. I hold a master's um, or German diploma in political science. My course and today's lecture focuses on sustainable entrepreneurship. Uh, so some of you might wonder what uh, this is actually about and how sustainability and entrepreneurship or sustainability and business go together. Sustainable entrepreneurs actually have a radically different view on what the purpose of business is about. Radically different in particular to that of um, classical liberal or neoliberal economic theory, which has come to dominate many areas of economic theory and practice. Mm. To illustrate this difference, I want to use a famous quote by Milton Friedman, the Nobel Prize winner and liberal economist, um, who once said, the business of business is business. Mm. He also titled one of his famous articles, the social responsibility of business is to increase its profits, um, arguing that the only group that a corporate executive should and must be responsible to is actually the owners or the stockholders of a company. And he would assume that these owners or stockholders um, would actually be only interested in making as much money as possible. And it would be irresponsible of um, a corporate executive not to follow this um, main interest. Mm -hmm. Still in, um, in liberal and neoliberal thinking, the idea is this fr that from this profit maximizing companies, there will be kind of like a trickling down of wealth and well being into society. For instance, um, through the income that people can generate who work for these companies. This very narrow idea of um, the purpose of business is actually now more and more being put into question. And sustainable entrepreneurs, they kind of flip it around by 180 degrees. To them, one could say the business of business is sustainability. They actually look at the outside world and the um, challenges out there, the environmental and social issues that we face, the problems that we face. And they look for ways um, where they can provide innovative solutions by means of entrepreneurship 
and um, business approaches. So here, having a business and founding a business is a means to um, contributing solutions to urgent ecological and social problems. So I hope this helped you understand, have a first idea of what sustainable entrepreneurship is about. Um, the course, I want to take a minute to um, show you what the course Green Business, German and European Sustainable uh, Entrepreneurship is actually about and uh, what we do in class. So um, the course actually brings together perspectives that usually are not um, tied or woven together very much in at universities, at colleges and departments in degree programs, but often treated only in separate uh, degrees. Um, that is sustainability on the one hand and business studies or entrepreneurship are the, on the other. And we actually look at them in an integrated perspective. And um, we very much combine theory and practice. So in these 11 sessions that we have, um, we look into theoretical concepts, a lot of practical application on various issues, starting with um, sustainability and sustainable development, looking at different approaches of companies to sustainability, then diving into what sustainable business models are actually about, and um, using this also to, in teams, um, develop their, your own uh, sustainable business ideas and turning them into sound uh, business models. Um, you will have a lot of opportunity to dive into the sustainability scene in Berlin, which is a very vibrant scene. Um, you will be uh, able to visit an event or visit one of the hubs that support sustainable entrepreneurs here in Berlin as part of your independent project um, and be able to speak to a guest speaker from a sustainable startup. Um, a key feature of this course actually is the idea to transfer insights uh, that you gain from the literature, from the examples that you get to know, from the visitor of events, also from some practical tools that we, um, we that you get introduced um, with, um, to apply this actually to your team process, so really putting into practice these concepts, understanding them better, but also seeing how they are practically relevant. And I hope this helps you in developing what I find are some crucial skills in our ever more complex world. Um, that is, of course, entrepreneurial skills, but in an integrated thinking. So you bring together um, not only the economic side of it, but also the social and environmental concerns. You will apply a lot of critical thinking, um, analyzing companies' approaches to sustainability, um, um, assessing how good they actually perform in terms of sustainable impact, um, and you will develop a lot also of collaborative leadership skills working in your teams. With today's lecture, I want to give you an impression of what um, sustainable entrepreneurship really is about and why it may uh, be relevant um, in today's world. The title of the lecture is A Green Business Can Sustainable Business Make a Change? Um, in the first part, I, I want to start out with um, putting together some basic arguments of why sustainable entrepreneurship could be important and relevant. Um, I then want to go into telling you more about what really characterizes these sustainable business models in practice, starting out with understanding the theory, theoretical concept of a business model and sustainable business models, and then also um, seeing how it's um, realized in practice by a practical ex example from Berlin. And finally, I want to finish up uh, looking at the big question and the big picture, can these kind of business approaches actually make a change? So why do we need sustainable entrepreneurship? Why is it relevant? One part of the answer is um, because we can only thrive within the donut. So I'm sure most of you now wonder what donuts and sustainability or sustainable entrepreneurship have to do with each other. Um, Kate Rayworth, a um, development economist who now uh, works at the universities of Oxford and Cambridge, she a few years ago came up with this image actually of a donut to visualize what uh, sustainable development is about. 
And the idea behind the donut is that we as humans, but also as uh, businesses, as economies, we can only thrive within this sweet spot that you have here, the sweet spot between the ecological ceiling and the social foundation. And the ecological ceiling actually comprises of the various um, components of our Earth system or the ecosystem functions that um, our human life on Earth relies on. This includes the global climate, biodiversity, the quality of the oceans, of the soils, um, and more. The social foundation then covers the basic human needs and rights that we need to have a short in order to leave a, uh, lead a decent life. Um, these include um, things like access to food, access to clean water, but also access to um, education or uh, gender equality or having a political voice. So the question now is, where do we stand? Are we living within the donut? Is our, are our systems running within the donut? Let's first have a look at the ecological ceiling. Kate Rayworth in her donut model has actually visualized the so-called planetary boundaries research. Um, the planetary boundaries tell us how much of our ecosystems we can use or extract from or put a burden on until they become unstable or even at risk of collapsing. And what you see here is that um, among these various components of our Earth system, there's three that are currently in quite a stable state still. That's the ozone layer depletion, ocean, ocean acidification, and freshwater withdrawals. Then there's um, two areas, those in gray, where global planetary boundaries are not defined yet, so we just don't know where we stand right now. But with regard to four of these components, we can definitely say we are partly way beyond uh, the planetary boundary where we can be sure that the systems remain stable. That is climate change, biodiversity loss, land, land conversion, meaning, um, for instance, shifting forest lands or wetlands uh, um, to streets uh, or farmland. Um, and the final one, uh, nitrogen phosphor phosphorus loading in soils, mostly due to the industrial agriculture. Mm. We cannot go into detail now of um, where we stand exactly with regard to all of these um, components, but I want to give you a few figures, a uh, few current figures. One on the issue of climate change um, and a little quiz for you. How many of the past 20 years do you think have been among the 20 warmest years ever recorded? And for your information, um, temperature recordings have started in 1850. It's 19. So 19 of the, uh, of the past 20 years have been among the hottest years ever recorded. So global warming is real and it has been accelerating tremendously over the past decades. Um, the other topic um, I want to give you a current figure on is biodiversity loss. Again, a quiz. Um, what do you think, what percentage of animal and plant species in this world is uh, threatened by extinction? It's around 25%. That's one million species, um, according to a recent report by the Intergovernmental Science Policy um, Platform on Biodiversity and, on, and Ecosystem Services under the auspices of the United Nations. So what uh, we see is that also uh, regarding the ecological ceiling and the planetary boundaries research, we overshoot our ecological limits in many crucial regards already. Then let's have a look at the social foundation. How does it look there? What you see here is the shortfall, actually, in terms of meeting the basic human needs and rights um, across all categories of key human needs and rights that you see around here. Um, for each domain, Kate Rayworth has picked either one or two indicators to see where we stand. 
you see you have for instance social equity or political voice with one indicator that's why there's only one red block here also with food um, and all the others have two indicators to see where we stand that's why there's two red columns in these other fields our housing also has only one mm. Uh, Kate Rayworth has used data from a number of international organizations that I have put up here as well. Um, and I want to give you some current figures just on a few issues. If you look, for instance, um, at access to food, which is the one with the least shortfall, let's say, still 9% um, of the global population are undernourished and uh, have been undernourished in 2019. Um, according to data of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. And we must expect, due, due to the COVID crisis, um, that this figure is going up again in 2020. If you look at access to um, water and sanitation here, 2.2 um, billion people around the world do not have safely managed drinking water services at their availability. Uh, 4.2 billion people, so more than half the global population, lacks access to safely managed sanitation services. And um, 3 billion lack basic hand washing facilities at their regular access. This is data from a 2019 report of the World Health Organization. If you look at gender equality as a final point down here, um, in 2018, the global pay gap, which is one of these indicators, has been at 20%. So women have earned for virtually the same job 20% less income than men. What do you think? Has Germany performed better or worse than that global average? Actually, it's been worse. Uh, the uh, gender pay gap in Germany in 2018 was at 21%. So what we see is also regarding our social foundations. We are not operating within the sweet spot or our safe and um, fair operating space for humanity, but we are operating way outside it. We are still far off basing the, uh, meeting the basic human needs um, across this planet. Now, what has all this to do with business? Um, Business, firstly, of course, also relies on a sustainable development. Business relies on staying within the donut, as it relies on the availability of natural resources, um, on healthy ecosystems, but also on social peace and a skilled workforce, for instance. Business has also been an important part of the problem uh, why we are in this unsustainable state today, of course, um, using a lot of resources, um, burning a lot of fossil fuels, driving air pollution, driving climate change, um, and also not always ensuring decent working conditions um, and basic working workers' rights in all places. Um, but the business sector is also crucial in developing solutions to these multiple ecological, economic and social crises that we face. Given its potential of innovation, um, its ability of designing solutions that really appeal to customers, to clients, to users, and also by its capacities to organize financial resources. So what you see here in this um, picture is the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Um, these um, have been adopted by the world community under the auspices of the United Nations in 2015 and they are supposed to be reached by uh, 2030. These include, as you see, um, some classical social and social economic uh, goals like no poverty or zero hunger but also um, environmental goals like climate action or life below water, which regards the sea world and the, the oceans, and um, also some cross-cutting goals such as sustainable cities and communities. Um, the idea behind the SDGs is actually that all segments of society, including the business sector, look how can they adopt these goals and uh, really look how they can contribute to achieving them. And actually many um, more and more companies are taking up this challenge. 
sustainable entrepreneurs, they actually base their vision and mission on achieving one or more of these goals. So having got an idea about why these sustainable entrepreneurs could be relevant, looking at um, how we are uh, surpassing our ecological limits, not meeting all the social needs on this uh, planet, um, but also looking into the potential of the business sector in developing solutions, I now want to go into what characterizes uh, these sustainable business models. I want to start um, with kind of the conceptual perspective or the theoretical perspective on it before I want to show you a practical example from Berlin. Mm. First of all, of course, we need to understand what a business model is. And a business model is all about value. This is what this present or gift uh, stands for. Um, a business model is an abstract representation of how an organization creates value looking at, most importantly, at what value is created for whom, how it delivers that value, so how is the value produced and with what partners, and how it captures this value, looking at what costs it, um, this um, business model creates and also what are the revenue streams and what revenues emerge from it. Um, the key goal of designing such a business model in the mm, conventional way and in conventional business modeling is to achieve economic or financial sustainability and profitability of um, a business model or even maximize it. In uh, sustainable business models, the perspective is much wider. Um, actually, um, German researchers, they have come up with four guiding principles that can help us design such sustainable business model. The first is a sustainability orientation, meaning um, that um, the business model should be oriented towards social, ecological and economic concerns in all its aspects. So you should think um, your um, uh, contributions, impacts uh, through in uh, all these regards. Uh, the second is extended value creation, looking or meaning um, not only to create value for maybe your customers or your shareholders, but um, for all a broad range of stakeholders who are affected by your business or who could affect your business, and looking at it not only in monetary terms, but also in non-monetary terms. The third systemic thinking um, focuses on understanding your business as part and being embedded in the wider economic, social and ecological systems and looking at how you, you as a business affect these systems and how these systems uh, affect you and the um, feasibility or sustainability of your business model. And the final one is stakeholder integration, meaning to really take seriously and really consider and integrate the concerns and demands and needs um, of the stakeholders of your business model, that those affected by it or those affecting your business model. This means, um, in a nutshell, we could say that a sustainable business model, um, with a sustainable business model, you seek to create economic, social and environmental value, deliver it in a sustainable way, in economic, ecological and uh, social terms, and uh, assess how, what costs and revenues you achieve through this model in ecological, social and economic terms. So this remains probably rather theoretical. Luckily, there's um, some practical tools that help us designing such sustainable business models. Um, one of these practical tools is the Sustainable Business Canvas, and this is the tool we are also using in my class. The canvas actually mirrors these three components that we just talked about, the create value, the deliver value, and the capture value. Um, the top part and the right part of the canvas show um, those components about creating value, of how value is created. Um, 
the vision and mission, the value proposition where you describe the value of your product and service and looking at um, for whom the value is created, who are your customers, are the other relevant stakeholders and competitors. On the left side, you have the deliver value component. So how is the product produced? What are the key activities and key resources in your own organization? And what are the key partnerships that you work with your suppliers, for instance, to um, produce your products or services? And finally, at the bottom, you have space to um, assess and capture the costs and revenues in social, ecological and economic terms. Now, that was the theory, uh, but how does a sustainable business model look like in practice? I want to use the example of soul bottles uh, to give you a detailed understanding of what such a sustainable business model can look like. Um, Berlin, as I said before, actually has a very vibrant uh, sustainable entrepreneurship scene and soul bottles is one of their prime examples. Um, the Soul Products GmbH, which is the company behind the brand uh, Soul Bottles, was actually founded in 2012 um, by uh, Paul Kupfer and Georg Tane at the age of 24, um, who were inspired actually by the movie Plastic Planet, a documentary movie which looked at the problem of plastic waste across the globe and which inspired them very much to do something about this issue. And they founded a company with a specific vision and purpose and uh, that you find here on the slide. All people enjoy behaving in a socially and ecologically sustainable way, consume without unnecessarily harming the planet and have access to clean drinking water. That's their vision and purpose. Mm, their core product are refillable glass bottles with the extra twist that um, for each purchase of um, a soul bottle, one euro goes to um, uh, clean water and sanitation projects by the charity Viva Con Agua. Mm -hmm. They also sell accessories like uh, glass straws and uh, bags for the uh, bottles. And since last year, they also offer a soul bottle from stainless steel. And this is how some of these soul bottles look like. Uh, there's many more designs in the online shop that you can check out. Um, the business model creates value for a number of stakeholders. Uh, it creates value for customers who um, get a beautiful bottle with a variety of designs so that everybody can actually find their own, how they call it, soulmate, um, which is fun to have and will draw the attention of people around you. And the soul bottle is also good for your health as there's really no plastic residues that could go into the water. Um, it is good for your wallet, as you don't need to buy bottled water again and again, but you just uh, use water from the tap. Mm. And it's uh, a means or a way for you to make a positive impact, as one euro of your purchase of this bottle goes into clean drinking and water and sanitation projects of Viva Con Agua. Um, those are, most of them are based in Nepal. Customers can also brand uh, their bottles and can even develop their own designs. This makes it very attractive for co uh, companies and other organizations to buy these sold bottles as they can show through these bottles their commitment to sustainability and also boost uh, maybe their image a little. Um, they can provide these in their companies um, or they can even give them as a gift to employees or to clients or to partners. The business model creates value also for the planet um, as it helps avoid the production um, of plastic bottles and plastic waste around the world. The business model then creates value for the communities that benefit from the um, clean water and sanitation projects. It creates value for the artists who um, are partners of the organizations who, who showcase who can showcase their artwork on the bottles and who are also featured on the company blog, uh, on the online blog. And finally, the business model also creates value for the suppliers and their workers and the communities along the supply chain. This is um, actually an aspect of how um, soul bottles deliver that value. And this is what we're going to look into in the next slide. 
A business model isn't just sustainable because the product or service has a positive impact. It also is crucial that it's delivered in a sustainable way. What you see here in the slide is that um, actually the production of the bottles that Soul Bottles sell is mostly organized or um, implemented by partner organization. Soul Bottles themselves, you see this in this column, um, they are actually in charge of designing the product, of organizing the marketing, of course, and sales. They run an online shop, uh, they acquire partner stores who would sell their bottles. They organize the procurement and logistics um, of the components that come to their warehouse, where then they then assemble and package the bottles. Mm. Soul bottles have worked a lot on um, designing and producing the bottles in a sustainable way. So you, what you see here is, for instance, the glass of the bottles is uh, 60 to 80 percent recycled glass. Um, they have been able to increase this recycling share considerably over the last years. Um, it's uh, manufactured now by a company from Germany to keep the transport emissions, the transport routes uh, short and the transport emissions low. The lid um, that you see up here is uh, made from recycled porcelain, also again manufactured and printed in uh, Germany, um, covered or kept uh, closed with a um, stainless steel bracket, and also the ceiling ring is made from natural rubber, so it's a 100% plastic-free bottle. Um, this natural rubber is produced by a company in Sri Lanka um, that is certified by the Fair Rubber Foundation. And this certif uh, certificate actually stands for um, fair pay of employees, for good working conditions, and for um, environmentally friendly production methods. The wrapping material of the bottles that you cannot see here but uh, that is put around for the shipping um, to the customers that is actually by now made of 95 percent cardboard this again also helps reducing the resource need and also the co2 emissions mm -hmm. actually all co2 emissions that are caused by this production and the transport of the bottles are compensated um, that means that a certain amount of money is invested into projects, for instance, reforestation products, uh, projects that allow to t uh, take um, CO2 from the atmosphere in the, to the extent that actually this product has caused emissions to the atmosphere. So in the end, the soul bottles are a cl so-called climate neutral product. As you saw in the last slide, they also have um, now stainless steel bottles as an alternative to the glass bottle. And these bottles are actually produced in China, which has been a very tough and long decision for the company to make as they prefer sourcing from Germany or from uh, re more regional at least than China um, to keep the transport emissions low, but also for um, yeah, just worrying or concern about the working conditions and also the political environment in China. And um, they have tried uh, to make a way to produce in Germany or Europe, but they ended up finding that um, a bottle would have cost around 300 euros then, and that was just not financially uh, yeah, sustainable or feasible. And so um, they went to China and talked to a lot of uh, companies there and visited a lot of companies, and they finally ended up... Um, selecting one that stood out because it's strong commitment to um, paying fair wages for to their employees and um, and also by their willingness to improve on other aspects of sustainability. Soul Bottles now works very um, intensely and very closely with them to improve on environmental health and safety standards in the company. And this is another example of how such a sustainable business, such a sustainable business model, can um, really drive change and create value for the partners also in the supply chain who can be supported then in becoming more sustainable themselves. 
Another, I think, nice um, uh, info on this, uh, how, del how soap bottles deliver value with regard to those stainless steel bottles is that um, for, for keeping the transport emissions from China to Germany low, as low as possible, they decided to have them transported by train from China. So bonds also have a very strong focus on um, having a positive impact through how they run their organization. Their operating system is based on holacracy, a system of self-organizing teams where each employee can actually choose his or her role in the organization, can even change that rule over time, and where these teams really have decision-making power and um, can drive forward their own projects. They practice non-violent communication, uh, an approach where conflicts are really openly addressed without harming others, but allowing um, the underlying feelings and needs to come to the surface. Since 2018, um, Soul Bottles is a so-called purpose company. This means that the sustainability-oriented purpose that you saw on the first uh, slide of this case study is actually now legally binding for the company. Um, it, all profits and assets of the company have to be reinvested into that purpose. The company is legally owned by its employees, not by any uh, financially invested person, um, and it cannot be sold or inherited to, to anyone. They have also committed to two schemes um, that evaluate the economic, social, and ecological um, value or um, impact, sustainability and impact of a company in quite a holistic manner. They are a certified B Corp, that stands for Benefit Corporation, a movement and a label that uh, comes from the US, but that has become quite popular in particular among sustainable startups here in Europe. And um, since this year, they are also a so-called common good company, um, participating in this uh, economy for the common good movement. This is a movement um, that emerged here in the German-speaking countries and has now quite widely spread across Europe and other parts of the world as well. And in this common good assessment, they actually achieved one of the highest scores ever achieved by the by now 700 companies and organizations who have gone through this assessment, which I think is another proof of um, this very integrated and holistic approach that they show to um, sustainability and the common good. And here then are some facts and figures about the concrete value they capture. Um, I uh, sketched the costs only generally as there was no concrete data available yet. Um, of course, there's economic costs for, for instance, materials, wages, the shipping, etc. And there's ecological and social costs. It doesn't go without any use of natural resources and it doesn't go without it any sometimes also hard labor. But I think what you saw and heard in the slide before is that Soul Bottles um, puts a lot of effort into trying to reduce um, their ecological and social footprint um, or negative impact uh, that they have through a, a number of, of things that they do um, in their own organization and with their suppliers. Mm -hmm. There's more detailed information uh, to find on the revenue, on the various aspects of revenue that the company generates. If you look at economic revenue that mostly comes from the sales of bottles and equipment, um, I put up a few current, uh, yeah, current price tags uh, for you so that you get an idea of what um, the costs of such a bottle are. And um, as you remember, one euro per bottle goes into uh, these um, clean water and sanitation projects in Nepal. By June uh, 2020, this year, actually, they celebrated the sale of their one million soul bottles sold. Um, this also brings us to the social revenue. So there's one more than one million euros by now collected um, for Viva Con Agua drinking water projects in Nepal, benefiting more than 80,000 people with access to clean water, sanitation and health. This is what WASH stands for. 
um, in terms of ecological revenues. So bottles calculate that um, through the th uh, sales of the bottles and thus avoiding the on and on purchase of bottled water and plastic bottles. And they have contributed to saving almost 25,000 tons of CO2 by now and to um, avoiding more than 100, 118 million plastic bottles to be produced. To finish up this case study, I want to um, show you what also characterizes many of these sustainable businesses. They actually drive change towards sustainability that goes way beyond their core business. Um, in the case of soap bottles, one thing they put a lot of effort and time in is education and dialogue. Actually, they have an elaborate blog um, on their website, the Soul Blog, how they call it, uh, where they not only inform about their work and the uh, how they produce their products or how they run their organization internally, but also they create a lot of awareness on this issue of plastic and plastic waste, and they um, give a lot of information on how you can avoid um, plastic in, and plastic waste in your everyday life. Besides the blog, they give a lot of interviews, um, they act as guest speakers at events and um, share their experience with other companies very elaborately. They have even been a partners in our program. Um, I had the chance to visit them with the um, Green Business course of fall 2018. So but it's also showed a lot of political activism, also typical of these kind of sustainable businesses. They are very active supporters of the Fridays for Future movement and have organized the block of Entrepreneurs for Futures at the Global Climate Strikes this and last year here in Berlin. And they lobby um, also for a new legal form to turn this idea of a purpose company into a proper legal form that companies can choose. Um, again, to just recall this idea of a purpose company or Verantwortungseigentum, how we call it in German, meaning responsibility ownership, um, means that the assets and profits of a company are really legally tied to the company and to that purpose of the company. Um, they must be reinvested here and cannot be extracted by any asset owner for their own private benefit. Last but not least, um, Soul Bottles together with Project Together and the Röchling Foundation, they set up the startup incubator, Soul Incubator, last year. Um, they support in this incubator other initiatives and startups to um, develop solutions regarding this, plas this big global plastic challenge. Um, the, they provide resources and coaching, they provide um, scholarships and office space and a lot of networking opportunities to these teams. The incubator currently um, supports 30 initiatives, um, 30 initiatives and startup teams um, with a focus on either reducing plastic, recycling pa plastic, redesigning plastic so it becomes more sustainable, or creating awareness uh, around the issue of plastic. The uh, program has been supported and is still supported by the European Social Fund and since this year also by a big uh, German retail chain. So soul bottles are of course only one example of what a sustainable business uh, and sustainable entrepreneurship can look like. There's many more examples out there here in Berlin, in Germany, in Europe, in the US, actually across the world. Um, they are often uh, still rather small companies, although not always, but they do make a change in very many ways. Mm -hmm. They make a change for the environment, in our case, in the case of soul bottles, through the products uh, which help avoid plastic waste and also through their um, sustainable production methods. They make a change for local communities, in our example, in particular for those communities in Nepal that benefit from clean water and sanitation projects and services. Um, they 
they work for changing the political framework conditions, the political frameworks for um, sustainable businesses to flourish, um, to support them better. They um, work towards societal change in our example by creating awareness, for instance, around this issue of plastic and plastic waste. And they make a change also in their markets and in the economy more generally. I think we have seen in detail um, how so the example of soap bottles um, make a change for their employees, um, giving them space to live up to their potential, um, how they make a change or um, create also value for the customers, uh, the users of the products and other, how they also drive change and make a change for their partners along the supply chain. But these businesses also um, make a difference at a broader scale of the economy. They inspire um, other entrepreneurs to turn their, their vision, their ideas into practice. They even support them in doing so. They um, also inspire other sustainability-oriented businesses, maybe with their approaches and ideas that can be taken up. And they even um, have an impact also on the conventional business world and even large mainstream market players um, who feel a growing pressure in becoming more sustainable themselves, who quite closely look at this um, sustainable business scene and what's going on there, taking up ideas from that scene and even looking for collaboration. So on the question, the big question, can sustainable businesses make a change? My answer definitely is yes, they can and they do in multiple ways. However, there is a precondition. And this precondition is that these companies really have a holistic, integrated approach to sustainability. It's not enough just to have a product or service that helps um, tackle one of the pressing environmental or social issues in this world. This product or service also has to be delivered. That means produced and transported in a way that is really sustainable. Only then we can really reduce um, and minimize the economic, ecological and social costs of a business model and maximize its ecological, economic and social revenues. With this, I also want to close today's lecture. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you could maybe take home the one or other interesting new insight, idea, or also um, inspiration. I wish you all the best for the next coming months. Um, stay healthy, stay well, and I hope to see some of you around here in Berlin. So take care and bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this week's lecture. You can find the dates and descriptions for all sessions in our digital lecture series, as well as information about our instructors and their courses on our website. Also, connect with us on social media and attend one of our informational webinars. Thank you very much for watching and we hope to see you again soon, online or on site in Berlin.